Hi everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about things to take care of post-startup funding. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and this way you will never miss out on any of the videos that we roll out every week. So closing the, your round of financing is going to be just the beginning of multiple steps and multiple things that are going to happen and that need to happen. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down for you all the insights, all the tips so that you're ready to really tackle what's coming your way with a bang. So without further ado, let's get into it. So you're funded. So now it's time to get to work. Now, what this means is that financing, getting money from investors is not a milestone. It's a stepping stone because now the expectations begin. So what you need to do is, yes, you want to celebrate and do all of that stuff, but you haven't achieved success. You just got the money to get you to where you want to be. So now what you want to do is you want to really get clear as to what is that strategic roadmap and what execution or things you need to be doing with your team in order to deliver on your promise to those investors that gave you the money. You also want to really get organized with all your paperwork, whether that is legal, whether that is admin, make sure that you have all the paperwork from whatever those investors signed into really in, in, like really well organized folders, whether that is on Google Drive or Dropbox, have the stock certificates, that equity that you have promised to your own employees or to advisors or to directors of your board, also well organized and just keep it clean because one thing that people do after getting those rounds of financing done is that they just become lazy. And then it's going to be a really painful process to get everything cleaned up. So why not just organize everything and as you keep moving forward, you are essentially putting whatever you need to be putting on those folders that you have in the cloud. While I say that getting financing is just a stepping stone, it's actually a big deal. If you take a look in the US, for example, there is a thousand pitch decks that are being created every couple of minutes. There is over 500,000 new companies that are launching every month in the US and only 1,500 companies get money from venture capital firms on a yearly basis. If you actually also take into account the companies that are getting follow-on rounds of financing, meaning that you got already financing and are getting an additional investment from those investors that bet, that placed a bet on you earlier. I mean, that's like 3,000 all in all, which is nothing taking into account all those numbers and all these people that are out there also seeking the money that you just got. One of the things that you could do is really promote whatever you can out of this round of financing that you just got because you can signal this to the press, to the market, to potential customers, essentially, especially if you've got that venture capital firm or that investor that is well known in the market, this is your opportunity to use that as social proof, a stamp of approval towards the audience, towards your market. So again, this is your chance to really get the marketing and the PR going so that people really know that you're coming out swinging and that you're ready to really expand things and scale things out. Then you need to refocus. Now that you got the money and that you've like really put behind all that distraction that this run of financing essentially was or, or was meant for you and for the business and for your team, now it's time to execute. Now, how are you going to shift that attention so that you can really push things forward? Now, one of the things that you also want to keep in mind is that as the company scales and as the company grows, you as the founder also need to grow in parallel. So you need to really develop that self-transformation because the last thing that you want is for your own investors to see that the company is outgrowing you and they end up kicking you out of the business. And that happens all of the time. So you want to be in a position where you're learning and where you're growing at the same pace of your business. You now want to start thinking about your exit. What is going to be your exit? The moment that you receive 
an investment from anyone, they are expecting returns. That means getting the money back with returns, obviously. And that is going to be in the form of an IPO, a secondary sale, where essentially you are existing investors are selling shares to new investors that are coming in. Obviously, the IPO is the initial public offering where you're taking your, your company public, ringing the bell at NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. And lastly, an acquisition can also happen by a larger player where it's either in stock or in cash as a way to really buy out everyone that is an equity holder in the business. So more money means more complex accounting. So here's your turn to really get your accountant up to date to make sure also that you have the budgets in place and that you understand very well where the money is going to be allocated and how that is going to be recorded from an admin perspective. This is critical. You want to have things clean because having things clean and organized is going to allow you to be able to move fast, especially if perhaps someone wants to come in and acquire you or someone wants to come in and put another investment in your business. Right away, if you have things clean, you will be able to just open it up for them to see, to take that money in and to continue to run without really having a lot of a distraction. Sales and marketing is going to be one of the biggest areas of focus. Once you got that money in, then you need to deploy and you need to expand. It's the time now of putting your product or your service in the market to really capture those customers and to go faster because going faster is going to allow you to be in a position of strength when in 18 or 24 months you need to go back to market to raise more money because you've been able to achieve sell certain milestones or goals. So here again, with sales and marketing, you want to be able to lead the way forward. It's good to have people that you can bring on board, that you can hire, but always, always, always make sure that you understand your customer and that you understand the channels that are going to be the most effective and the channels where you should be deploying that capital and perhaps you hire people that, can, that you can delegate on, but you need to understand it yourself. Otherwise, it could be catastrophic. Now you also want to define new metrics and KPIs. Those KPIs, which is essentially the metrics and the goals, are going to be much different from the time before you were uh, raising that money. Now that you got the money, now you have more resources, you have more dry powder, and you should be in a position to achieve bigger and higher metrics. You want to get your team aligned. You want to really get them enrolled into that vision and that future that everyone is living into so that it's compelling enough to really be rowing at the same time with the same moves as everyone else. Now that you have more money, you can make new hires. Probably at this point, what you want is senior executives. People that maybe before you didn't have the budget to accommodate, now you can bring them in. Maybe you can give a, perhaps a balance there between cash and also equity in the form of stock options that you give them to really create that incentive for them to stick around in the long run. Now, what you want here is to make sure that they are not only a fit with the culture and that they're like A plus players, but also you need to look for people that are going to work very well with already the employees that you have in the business because even if it's a rock star it may not be a fit with the other players that you have in your team and that could be an internal cancer and completely toxic and something that you want to avoid now is the time to systemize and automate investor updates now that they've given you the money you want to be keeping them up to date as to what are some of the perhaps milestones and what's the progress that the company is making. Now, the farther that you are in the life cycle of the business, probably the longer that you'll wait to be sending those updates. Now, the younger that you are, probably the more often you're going to be sending those updates. Typically, you're going to be starting with on a monthly basis those updates, and then you will be shifting to a quarterly basis the updates. Probably quarterly if you are at a series B passed, which is 5 million plus in revenue. And if you're 5 million and under, you're probably going to be going on a monthly basis to keep people warm. The reason why you're doing those updates is so that whenever you need the money, they already know what's going on. Or maybe they are even the ones that are offering you the money because they are excited with how things are going. 
So at this stage in the game, what you want is you want to avoid getting to that point where you're needing the money, you're going back to those investors and you need to re-educate them and it's going to take you more time in order to get them excited because they don't know what's going on. So that's why you're using updates. You're using updates where you are updating them on perhaps milestones that you've achieved, on, press on, 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 on mentions on the press, on new hires that you've made for the business. So some of those critical things that are going to get them excited and for them to really understand that you are delivering on the promise that you made when you initially got that investment in. Also, I know it's, it's counterproductive and you will never think to do this, but the minute you close your round of financing, that's the moment that your next round of financing starts. So some of the things that you want to do at this point is the following. Identify your next target investors. Begin nurturing relationships with them. Include them in investor updates. Ask current investors for introductions. Enroll your next set of advisors to take you to the next level. Revise your pitch deck. Update your online data room. Show what you've achieved with the last round of financing. So keep these factors in mind. Now get out there, go get your milestones because you've just got that stepping stone, which is a great one. So congratulations. And then also hit a like on this video, leave a comment and let me know how things are going and how you're thinking about financing rounds. Uh, also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And then as well, if you're raising money, send me an email at alejandro at pantheraadvisors.com. I would love to help out. Thank you so much for watching.